We hope that this demonstration video will clarify the procedural steps for a bedside placement of a peripherally inserted central catheter, or PIC line, and the venous anatomy involved. A review of maximal sterile barrier precautions is covered to highlight the importance of using a process bundle during a PIC insertion procedure. PIC lines are soft, flexible catheters used to provide intravenous access for the administration of fluids, antibiotics, chemotherapy, and other therapies. Blood sampling and venous pressure monitoring are also common uses for PIC lines. PICs may be used for short or long-term therapy, which, according to the Infusion Nurses Society, can continue uninterrupted until completion of therapy, provided there are no unresolved complications. PIC placement procedures take place in hospitals, outpatient centers, long-term care facilities, and other healthcare facilities. They are performed by healthcare practitioners trained in PIC insertion. Although PIC insertion methods vary, there are two primary methods for placement. Fluoroscopic guided placement is performed using X-ray guidance for positioning the tip of the catheter in the desired location. Bedside placement uses an external measurement technique that ensures proper anatomical positioning. Either placement technique may utilize ultrasound guidance to aid with localizing and accessing the peripheral vein. Today's demonstration will be an insertion using ultrasound localization in a bedside placement. This technique can be used for the placement of any pick line. The clinician will perform the procedure at the patient's bedside. Prior to performing the procedure, the clinician reviews the patient's medical record. She checks to ensure that the physician's order for PIC placement is complete and accurate, and that the medical record includes required information, such as the patient's history, diagnosis, drug allergies, labs, and medications. The PIC placement procedure begins with an initial assessment of the patient. During this assessment, the clinician checks the patient's armband to verify identity. The clinician explains to the patient and caregivers, if present, the steps of the PIC placement procedure. She will also discuss the patient's responsibilities during and after the procedure and potential complications. She answers any questions the patient may have before requesting that an informed consent form be signed. Next, the clinician looks for a vein that is suitable for PIC placement. Typically, PIC lines are placed in the right arm, but either arm can be used based on vein suitability, previous surgeries, proximity to an artery or nerve bundle, and other factors. Today, we will place a PIC line using the modified Seldinger technique. To begin, the clinician positions a tourniquet high on the patient's arm and applies ultrasound gel to the area. She uses an ultrasound transducer, or probe, to locate a suitable vein. A PIC line is commonly placed in the basilic, cephalic, or brachial vein of the arm, leading to the superior vena cava. The clinician identifies the best vein and makes a mental note of the location by remembering the proximity to a scar or freckle, or simply by remembering the distance from the antecubital fossa. In this case, the basilic vein has been selected. The clinician releases the tourniquet, but ties it loosely on the patient's arm for later use during the actual vena puncture. She wipes off the excess gel. She returns the probe to its holder and adds more gel to the probe for its next use. The inserted length of a PIC line will vary according to patient size and point of insertion. PIC lines typically are trimmed to a length that is just long enough to lead from the insertion site to the lower one-third of the superior vena cava. To measure for PIC length, the patient's arm is positioned at a 45-degree angle from the body. With a tape measure, the clinician begins measuring at the antecubital fossa, proceeds to the midclavicular line, 
and turns the tape measure to reach the third intercostal space at the right side of the sternum. This is where the tip of the catheter will be positioned, in the lower one-third of the superior vena cava. Full aseptic precautions are essential during the pick insertion process. Hand washing is the cornerstone of aseptic technique. The clinician begins by washing her hands before opening the pick procedural tray. She puts on a sterile mask with eye shield and a head cover. She washes her hands once again, according to aseptic technique, and prepares to drape and prep the patient for the procedure. Next, our patient raises her arm and the clinician places the sterile drape beneath. The patient lowers her arm, palm up, and rests it on the drape. The clinician scrubs the patient's arm for a minimum of 30 seconds with chlorhexidine solution, using a back and forth frictional scrub to thoroughly cleanse the site of insertion. She then puts on sterile gown and gloves with the help of her assistant. The clinician and the assistant then place the large fenestrated drape over the patient, covering the patient from head to toe. They use the body diagram on the drape for proper orientation and place the fenestration over the intended venipuncture site. Most picks come in sets that include the components required to complete the insertion process. The TurboJact set includes choice of pick, echogenic needle, wire guide, peel-away introducer, syringe, obturator, end cap, measuring tape, scalpel, stat lock securement device, catheter ID card, and needle disposal container. The supplies are arranged in a sterile, organized fashion for easy reach and access, keeping items toward the center of the sterile field. Final preparations are made for the pick insertion. The clinician removes the air from the saline syringes. She also flushes both lumens of the catheter and clamps them. The clinician opens the lidocaine ampule by snapping off the top. She attaches the filter straw to the syringe and draws the lidocaine into the syringe. The needle is then attached. She places all of the necessary items within easy reach. She places the sterile probe cover on the ultrasound probe over the gel that was previously applied. She secures the cover with rubber bands. She opens the packet of sterile ultrasound gel and applies the gel to the probe cover tip. Now, she prepares to access the vein. The clinician's assistant ties the tourniquet tightly to engorge the vein. Using ultrasound, the clinician confirms the location of the vein. She injects the lidocaine just under the skin in the area over the selected vein, warning the patient that this may sting. Still using the ultrasound as a guide, she inserts the access needle into the arm. The ultrasound image confirms that the needle is in the vein, as does a small amount of blood return. The clinician carefully advances the wire guide through the needle into the vein and removes the needle, leaving the wire guide in place. She places the needle in the sharps container or needle disposal container and loosens the tourniquet through the drape. The clinician threads the introducer and dilator over the wire, stopping just short of the skin so that the insertion site can be widened to accommodate the introducer. She administers additional lidocaine to numb the insertion site and again warns the patient that it may sting. With the scalpel blade, the clinician nicks the skin to widen the needle tract so that the introducer can be inserted easily. The nick can be up to one half centimeter in length. Once the needle tract is widened, she slides the safety cover back over the scalpel blade. She advances the introducer and dilator through the skin and into the vein. The introducer is now ready to facilitate the catheter's entry into the vein. Using the measurements taken a few moments ago, the clinician trims the catheter to the proper length for insertion using the scissors or scalpel. 
she pulls back the obturator to ensure that it is not cut when the catheter is trimmed. She makes sure that each lumen is patent and not pinched closed after trimming. The precise trimmed length of the catheter will now ensure that the tip reaches the superior vena cava. The clinician flushes the catheter with the sterile saline solution. She flushes enough solution to thoroughly moisten the obturator surface. This activates the hydrophilic coating, which makes the obturator surface very lubricious and easily able to slide in or out of the catheter. She removes the wire and dilator and leaves the introducer in place. To prevent inadvertent air aspiration after removing the wire guide and dilator, she places a thumb or finger over the proximal end of the sheath. The clinician inserts the pick with obturator into the introducer. She slowly advances the entire measured length of the pick into the vessel. The clinician instructs the patient to take deep, regular breaths. Slowly advancing the catheter upon each inspiration helps draw the catheter into the superior vena cava and away from the jugular. Once the catheter is fully inserted, she removes the peel-away introducer by grasping the two wings of the sheath and pulling outward and apart. She alternately advances the catheter into the sheath and pulls on the two wings of the sheath. With the sheath removed, a slight advancement of the catheter may be needed for final positioning. With the catheter now in place, she aspirates and flushes each lumen and checks for blood return. At this time, she asks the patient if she can hear a whooshing sound in her ear when the lumen is flushed. If no sound is heard, it is unlikely that the catheter is malpositioned in the jugular vein. Once blood return is confirmed, she removes the obturator and sidearm fitting and places end caps on the pick line. She uses the sterile saline to flush the end caps. The clinician secures the pick line to the patient's arm with an adhesive securement device to ensure that the catheter does not migrate out of position. She removes the sterile drapes and discards them. She covers the insertion site with a transparent film dressing. At this point in the procedure, a chest x-ray must be taken to verify that the pick tip has been properly placed in the superior vena cava. The clinician then documents the confirmation of the tip location in the patient's medical record, including the date, time, person reading the x-ray, and confirmation that the pick is ready for use. After the pick has been successfully inserted, the clinician explains to the patient or a caregiver the proper care and maintenance of a pick line. 